My freshman year on Wave Robotics, we were packing up our robot for competition. A mentor, John, said to me, do you do this because your dad wants you to be like a boy? <laughs> the answer is, of course not. I have a little brother who does theater and musicals and whatever else. He's actually in one right now. My parents and mentors are incredibly supportive of what I do at Wave, but I guess that's the point to begin with. No one's going to ask you if you're doing robotics because your mom wants you to be like a girl. And very few people are going to see a little girl and think, yeah, she looks like an engineer. <laughs> so my freshman year, which, which was only two years ago, I signed up for all the activities that my friends did, starting with orchestra. I played the viola, and if you don't know what that is, Google it. I also dabbled in the arts. I tried out drawing, took an art class my freshman year. I even learned a little bit of guitar, and I played piano. And I did forensics, which is a sort of a speaking competition, a little bit easier than what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I would never have described myself as girly, and I still won't despite the eye makeup that I'm sporting right now. <laughs> I was just a kid who didn't know what I wanted to do, and I was just a girl who hadn't been forced into engineering opportunities. Then, one day, a kid in my biology class would not shut up about wave robotics. Every single day, he'd go, I need somebody to join programming. I don't want to be the only programmer next year. I need somebody to join WAVE with me. Now, I knew that WAVE was Oshkosh's high school first robotics program. But I decided to join just to learn more. Little did I know that this would be a turning point for both myself and our community. Robots, engineering, and me. Change can be initiated by commitment from a single person. And looking back into history, we can see that it is true from the iconic Rosie the Riveter. As men were pulled away to fight during World War II, women stepped up into new industrial jobs. While this had happened on a much smaller scale during World War I, this was the first time that women were really stepping up into these roles. And it definitely showed. By 1945, the workforce was nearly 37% female. But that's not the most drastic change. In the aviation industry, prior to World War I, women made up less than 1%. But by 1943, they made up nearly 65%. But this wasn't because Aunt Bestie was like, I want to work in aviation today. Rather, it was due to an intense courtship of women by employers and government, which created that change. Magazines would write slogans and articles to entice women into the workforce. And this is important to my speech because it proves that the demographic of a field can be changed, whether by positive propaganda or a change in the tide. Along with Rosie the Riveter, there are countless other women who have been hidden by the curtains of time and others who peek through. Among their ranks are two-time Nobel Prize winner Marie Curie, first American woman in space, Sally Ride, and, one you may not have heard of, legendary test pilot Jerry Cobb. These women's stories are inspiring and cannot be washed away, but I only have 14 minutes left, so I can't go into all their stories. So we'll focus on one more woman, Margaret Hamilton. She is incredible, and she should have a musical about her. <laughs> uh, she was a business owner, a mother of two children, and an engineer. And she got a job working at Harvard to support her husband. No, sorry. She got a job working at MIT to support her husband as he went through Harvard Law, which is pretty incredible because I would love to go to MIT, much less work as a programmer there. At MIT, she was specifically responsible for code for the Apollo command modules, and she worked on the actual onboard flight software. So she helped land men on the moon, constantly inventing and reinventing the ideas that are now the cores of computer programming. While she helped land the men on the moon, she also helped save them during Apollo 8, when Jim Lovell 
accidentally called a launch command while in the middle of flight. Hamilton helped save the day there, too, by re-uploading navigational data, and the rest of the flight went without strife. Hamilton was a pioneer, both in her life and at NASA, and in the field she created, software engineering, which is something that I might want to go into someday. So, I know I said I was only going to talk about one woman, but it turns out I actually forgot about Admiral Grace Hopper. Not sure how anyone does that, but I managed it. <laughs> Admiral Grace Hopper, while you may not all have heard of her, is an incredible woman. Her accomplishments start when she got a PhD in mathematics from Yale all the way in 1934. She, was, she has received over 30 honorary doctorate degrees. She also was a member of the US Navy and created the world's first operational compiler. Now, that's pretty cool because it takes the code that you write in a programming language, like I do for our robots, and translates it into the language that a robot or machine can use. So, a lot of ones and zeros. Hopper is just another incredible woman that we sometimes forget about. We have to remember that today, that there are incredible women too, and there aren't enough of them. So what we have to do is create a change for them to be able to peek through. One place where I've sort of learned about how uh, engineering works was Wave Robotics, and a lot of it was thanks to an amazing mentor I had. I was sucked in to Wave Robotics. I got sucked in by my mentors. I was sucked in by two extraordinary senior boys who programmed the very best autonomous program for this robot. <laughs> and I was, pro I was sucked in by the most awesome engineer, my mentor, Kelly. I got the, ex uh, the exposure that I just hadn't gotten previously. And I realized that this was something that I could do. Before, I hadn't really been exposed to anything that I just really liked. I thought, maybe I could be a journalist, because I'm in the school newspaper, and I mean, it's all right. But I just couldn't see myself doing that long term. With Wave, I found a passion, surrounded by guys. <laughs> and so that's the thing. STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, are all male-dominated fields. But they don't have to be. We need to remember that girls have the interest and the talent to be involved in STEM, just like anyone else. Here is where I could spout dozens, maybe even hundreds, of statistics at you. But you might fall asleep, so I'll try to keep it short. Women hold less than 25% of STEM jobs. And in 2013, three short years ago, women held only 12% of jobs in engineering. But we can change that. Remember Rosie the Riveter? Change can clearly happen. But what we have to do is create that change. Because if we don't, who will? And that change, it can be significant in someone's life. It can change their whole world. It can show them opportunities that they didn't know existed. And it will say, it's OK to try something new. It's OK to hypothesize. It's OK to innovate. It's definitely OK to fail. And it's OK that I am a girl and that I want to do this. Through small-scale changes in our environment, we can change the environment around us and make better opportunities for everyone around us. But as I said before, we have to start somewhere. How many people here actually knew who Admiral Hopper was? Right? And who thought that Jerry Cobb was a man? I'll admit that both of them got me the first time I heard of them. And this is because of the ways our beliefs are formed. Our implicit bias is the reason we think of these iconic figures as men. Our attitudes and our backgrounds affect our actions and our decisions all subconsciously. But that can change. One way that's changing is mass media. Today, on TV, we see a show about a girl who's pitching in the big leagues. 
and we see a bazinga show about a smart guy with an even smarter girlfriend who just happens to be a neuroscientist in real life. She also knows three languages. Wow. Society teaches us lies, like girls can't do that. And that's just not true. Early exposure to phenomenal women, like the one in Big Bang Theory that I mentioned, and I'm not allowed to say the name of that, so. <laughs> um, as well as Admiral Hoffer and my mentor Kelly can help change that implicit bias. Creating social relevance in these fields can help cultivate a sense of belonging, which is incredibly important. For adults to take opportunities to be role models in fields such as STEM can help create a better environment for everyone. At WAVE, I've had the phenomenal opportunity to have that experience. I have worked with mentors, and they've helped me find my passion. And that brings me to the next point. In girls, a growth mindset is also incredibly important, which can be also cultivated by parents encouraging us to do that hard stuff. And once we find an interest, support us. As our passion grows, we will work on self-improvement. We'll be driven to succeed just like anyone else. Help us pave the way to brilliance by introducing girls to STEM. Encourage us to do hard stuff like math and science. And challenge us with opportunities to learn. Push us into that machine shop and hand us a tool. As I said before, exposure is incredibly important. And one pretty easy example of that is myself. I don't think I ever would have figured out what I wanted to do with my life had I not inadvertently been forced into joining Wave Robotics. Knowing and learning about what you want or maybe think you want to do or just trying it out is incredibly important, no matter who you are or what it is that you want to do. Two girls. While there's not a whole lot of you in the audience, <laughs> um, my advice is to take every opportunity to learn whether it's just by fooling around with tools, or it's by meeting and working with great women in the field you want to go into, like my mentor Kelly. Stick with it if you like it. Share it with your friends, because a lot of times, all we need is that nudge and that opportunity. One place where I've experienced the sense of belonging that I mentioned before was an all-girls competition in 2015, which you can see some of the awards we won up there. It was a phenomenal experience. I felt comfortable in my skin doing something that I really loved to do, despite the fact that I was barely a sophomore. It was an incredible experience, and I learned so much from the people around me, and I was inspired by the people at the competition. There, I had the opportunity to do something called operating the robot, and the way that works is there's a driver and there's an operator. The driver drives the robot like you drive a car. The operator does the auxiliary stuff like changing the radio, I was the one who changed the radio. <laughs> and it was phenomenal. Uh, it totally gave me a confidence boost. I had an amazing time. And so when we went back in 2016, which I don't have a picture of, I'm sorry, uh, I think I attended with a little bit more confidence. This year, I had the opportunity to be the operator for our 2016 robot throughout the regular season. So that was incredible. So I stepped in to this competition just feeling more confident and being able to share the knowledge that I'd gained in the past year with other girls. And it was just, it was just great. I know I'm gushing. <laughs> uh, the best part, along with learning, was that I felt really comfortable and there was no guys trying to shove their way into my spot. And nobody was trying to hit on me, so that was pretty great. <laughs> every, while every girl knows that the real world isn't like an all-girls competition, it's fun to pretend for a moment. But of course, there will be roadblocks. There will be plenty of roadblocks. There will be guys telling you, you only get to do this because you're a girl. I've gotten that one quite a few times. And the other hand, there'll be guys holding the door open to help you, which is a little bit of an internal conflict, because I want to have the same opportunities they do. But 
And I also want to make the same amount as they do once I get to the workforce. Maybe a little bit more. But, but only because I deserve it. But we can't let any of that stop us, define us, or do anything more than help us along. Because there is a whole wide world out there. And I'm not going to let anyone or anything stop me from reaching it. So this past year, as I mentioned before, I had the phenomenal opportunity to operate our 2016 robot. And thanks to a lot of encouragement from my parents, from mentors, from peers, I was actually the first girl ever to be in that position on my team. So that was pretty sweet. <laughs> this year, I took yet another step out of my comfort zone by running for team lead. And I got it. <laughs> this... <laughs> This was only because a lot of support from people like my parents, who let me stay out till 10 p.m. working on a robot, sometimes 10.30, <laughs> to my mentors and to my peers. And I just want to inspire others like they inspired me to learn. While I've been impacted hugely by WAVE, it's people like my good friend Becca who have really pushed me into those positions. When I joined the team, I was a freshman, and she was a junior, so she was, like, ancient. <laughs> and she was the first person on the team who actually talked to me. And that made me realize that feeling comfortable in your environment does wonders to how much you want to learn. And it also helps us remember that we're here to be a person and do that work, no matter our gender. When I joined WAVE, I was very quiet, and very, very shy. <laughs> and look at me now. <laughs> I was impacted hugely, as I said before, but it's Becca. It's, it's Becca who has blown me away. I'm starting to run out of time, but I have to tell this story. When I started writing this TEDx talk, I asked Becca if I could talk about her, and she said future resume was mentioned by a TEDx talk. She was amazing. She joined our team as a sophomore, thanks to a series of coincidences, culminating with her going to a meeting and finding a family. She finished paying off her detentions halfway through her senior year. Those were accumulated her freshman year. She's amazing, and she's attending UW-Platteville right now. I'm so incredibly proud. Wave showed her a greater world. As Gandhi said, we need not to see to wait what others do. We need to do it ourselves. We need to be that change. Thank you.